Since I announced our search for the next general manager and CEO of Seattle City Light, we made finding the right leader the top priority because Seattle City Light powers the city. It is one of the nation's largest public utilities and it is critical to the day-to-day -day operations of this city. And ensuring the delivery of environmentally responsible, reliable, and affordable power to hundreds of thousands of business and residents. That's why I am thrilled today to announce that I believe we have found the right leader and that leader that will take this utility to build to the next century, Deborah Smith, a 22-year veteran. Deborah is a 22-year veteran of a public utility industry in the Pacific Northwest. She knows and understands the culture of the Pacific Northwest and has good background and leadership in the operation of utility. I want to talk about Deborah some more, but I also here, I want to just break for a minute. I want to thank Jim Beggs, who served as Interim Director of Seattle Utility. Jim had a really unenviable position. In his first briefing to me, he came to me to talk about the strategic plan for Seattle City Light that he inherited. He sat down with me and that plan called for uh, new rates of over 10%. Of course, we said no, get back to the drawing board and Jim did. He went back, worked it hard and we still came with a rate path that I, I think the city council and the leadership of the city believe is too high. It's not an affordable rate path for this utility, but it was one that wouldn't have happened without Jim Begg's leadership and determination to really dig in. So Jim, thanks for all your work. I want to say that Deborah is the right person at the right time to take over the helm in Seattle. In looking for someone to fill this position, in many ways we were looking for a leader that some people told me didn't exist. I knew we needed someone who had public utilities experience and background. But we had to have someone who could also dig into Seattle City Light and understand what was working well. And believe me, there are things that work really well at City Light. Our crews that go out and restore power and put up new power are known nationwide for their capabilities. Every windstorm that comes through Seattle, they are out there making sure that the lights come on to every resident and every business in the city of Seattle. They are so good that they were recruited to go down to California when we had the fires to help restore some of the cellular towers and network there. So I want to acknowledge the really good work that people do day in, day out at City Light. But at the same time, we know that we have significant challenges there, both culturally, that's been well reported, but also where this utility is poised in this new world we live in, in a, in a changing environment around energy. If we want to be that leader, not just for the nation, but for the world, on how to take good, clean, green energy change the business plan for Seattle City Light and position us for the future. To be that leader, we needed a special kind of leader. And that is Deborah Smith. She has two decades of experience in the public utility industry in the Pacific Northwest. Since 2013, she has led the Central Lincoln Public Utility District, which provides electricity to residents on the Oregon coast. With Deborah, we are getting a leader who is obsessed with customer service, and we know we need work there. She is dedicated and curious about how do we innovate, but how do we innovate without sacrificing delivering the essential services that we need for our residents and businesses. Under her leadership, the Central Lincoln PUD achieved its highest ever customer satisfaction ratings and transformed into an entirely paperless utility. She recognized that if confirmed by the city council, she knows she will have the job of delivering an essential service that every resident and business in Seattle needs and relies on every single day. She also recognizes that we're lucky to have the greenest utility in the country with City Light. 
but we still must do more to continue to be a leader in climate and clean energy. With a federal administration that seems bent on moving backwards on every issue related to climate change and clean energy, it will be up to cities and major public energy utilities like City Light to lead the way, to be an example, and to show that clean, green energy is not just the smart and right thing to do, it is the better business model for the future. We must, as a city, renew our commitment to clean energy. We also have to renew our commitment to helping address Seattle's affordability crisis. We have to do better by our ratepayers and get our rates as low as possible for residences and for businesses. We have to expand the ability for people who are disadvantaged or seniors to take advantage of reduced utility costs. We know that as Seattle has grown, it has also grown more challenging for many of our neighbors. Many of our residents are struggling to afford their basic utilities, which is why we have to continue our investments in the utility discount program, in the emergency low income assistance program, in HomeWise and Project Share. Just as importantly, I think Deborah is the right person to ensure that City Light develops that workplace culture where every employee feels safe, respected, welcomed, and understands they have the ability to advance. This is something that I talked to her about, I talked to every one of the finalists about, and I know from talking to Deborah, she is committed to those changes we need at City Light to be consistent with the changes we will make across this city. One reason that we are very well positioned and one reason I was so fortunate to get really top candidates for this position is because of the leaders behind me on the whole search committee. Eileen Quigley, Sharon Nelson, and Cal Shirley did enormous jobs as the co-chairs. Dennis Hayes and Michael Mann provided invaluable input, as did the broad spectrum of people we had. They have been at the cutting edge of energy and conservation for decades in this region, and I was very fortunate to have them serve. Thank you for your service. I know that once the city gets to know Deborah and the city council members meet her and see her vision for City Light, they will be as impressed as I was. Kind of like uh, some of the things that we do beating Oregon every day, we're now stealing one of Oregon's best. I also want to note that I think it's important that <clears throat> if confirmed, Deborah would only be the second woman to ever lead City Light. And with that, I want to welcome our next CEO of City Light, Deborah Smith. Am I the only one that's incredibly hot, or are you guys all, yeah. It's just oh. the press in Seattle, they always make you hot. Yeah, I didn't think it was supposed to be this warm in Seattle, so this is all new. So thank you so much, Mayor. I have to say that one of the things I'm most excited about is the opportunity to work with the mayor. So um, thank you so much for the opportunity. So um, members of the search committee, thank you for the chance to stand here today and the opportunity, because it truly is an opportunity to serve Seattle City Light. I'm honored by the nomination and I'm thankful that the council will consider me for that role. Um, having worked in the utility industry in the Pacific Northwest for over two decades, I can tell you that Seattle City Light really is regarded as one of the great utilities. I spend time every month in Portland, and Seattle City Light, um, you know, th this is the big time here. Uh, the men and women, a shout out to the men and women who run and, and work for Seattle City Light. You're professionals, you're well thought of, uh, you have great reputations. I'm excited to learn from you and to spend time with you and understand the challenges and the opportunities that all of you are facing. Um, simply put, Seattle City Light is a place where people want to go to invent the future and I'm thrilled to be part of, of, of that process going forward. So I can tell you that I've always hoped uh, that there'd be a chance to be part of this of this group. Uh, for the last 22 years, as the mayor said, I've worked in the public utility industry here in the Northwest, and I worked my way up uh, at a utility in, in Oregon, and then ultimately spent the last five years as a general manager. 
Um, and while there we have, we've made great strides and done some things I'm really proud of. The mayor already mentioned our customer satisfaction ratings and uh, the fact that we are we do all of our uh, all of our uh, field work without paper. Um, but I can also say that we have been leaders in Oregon in preparing ourselves for a Cascadian or other event, and that's something that we've really focused on, and emergency preparedness in this part of the country is incredibly important. Um, if confirmed, my job would be to draw on the experiences that I've had and to help lead the men and women of City Light to create an even stronger future for the City of Seattle and our customers throughout the region. Um, it's really an amazing time right now in this industry. It's been status quo for a very long time and it is status quo no more. So there are amazing opportunities and it is a time of transformative change. Customers know what they want and it's our responsibility to deliver the things they want and to do so in a cost, a cost effective and affordable way. And I feel challenged and excited by that mission. Uh, during our conversations about the opportunity, Mayor Durkin and I also did discuss the need for City Light to keep rates as low as possible. I take that responsibility seriously, um, and that would be my top priority. Um, I have always felt that because our customers don't get to choose us with their dollars, we have an even higher and greater responsibility to behave in ways that would cause them to do so if they could. And so I think affordability is at the top of people's list when they think about how they would choose to receive those critical products and services. Um, as Mayor Durkin mentioned, one of the incredible things about uh, the city of Seattle and City Light is our reputation for being a green utility, and it needs to stay that way, especially at this moment in our nation's history with so many things in flux and in play. We can't rest on our heels, uh, and we need to continue to stay focused on clean energy and the impacts of climate change on our everyday lives. Um, I also share Mayor Durkin's belief in the need to make progress on workplace culture issues. Those are hard things. They're hard things to engage. They're hard things to address. And I believe that the tone starts at the top. I'm committed to creating a place where employees and customers and community members feel heard, that they feel respected, and they're treated kindly, and then they know that they matter. And that's really kind of the heart of what, 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 how I interact with all the different people that interact with the utility. Um, I guess as last, um, in the coming weeks, I would say I look forward to sitting down with other folks, other members of the hiring team, people in the city, uh, city council members, certainly employees, the strong, strong leadership team that Jim has been uh, working with over these past months to learn more about what the issues are and how I can help solve them and, and create uh, collaborative solutions moving forward. So thank you again, Mayor. Now I am really, really hot, so I'm not usually this sweaty, I'm just going to say, but thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, and I'd love, I'm going to take some questions. I first want to take any questions related to City Light, and if there's any additional questions people have on other topics, I'll take that. And again, I just, three things. I want to thank the search committee and the leaders standing behind me for the great work they did and the hours they spent to bring us the great people. Um, and with that, I also want my own HR department. They did amazing work pulling the search together, so I want to thank them for that. I again want to thank Jim Baggs for his leadership from the minute I, he took the helm. We have had a numerous meetings looking at City Light and how do we position it for the next leader. And third, I think again, we have to thank the men and women of City Light. You know, they deliver something that we take for granted literally every day. We flip on the lights in our business, our homes, our restaurants, our cafes, you name it and invariably it's dependable energy. We are lucky in the Northwest to have the greenest grid anywhere, but we have to be ready for the next innovations in energy technology. Dennis Hayes, who is at the Bullet Foundation, has a building that's not just energy neutral, it gives energy back to the grid. We will see more and more neighborhoods, communities, and buildings having their own grids and going off of City Lights power. We have to prepare for that. We have to know how to make it work. We have to know how we encourage that kind of development and how we make sure that we have the most climate friendly energy delivery system anywhere in the world. I think we can get there and I want to thank Deborah for being up to the challenge. So questions, David, I saw your hand first. Obviously uh, Newport is a much smaller utility than Seattle by a factor of quite a few. <laughs> 
that not a concern to you, Mayor, and, and what sort of investment you made? She is, and you saw she spent a lot of time at the larger utility in Oregon first. She stepped down in grade to make sure she get the CEO experience. We vetted all the candidates to measure a number of things that we thought are important for the leadership that we have at City Light. And I think what's critical are those issues I taught. Someone who can lead and tackle workplace culture. Someone who can make sure that the men and women of City Light are supported so they continue to deliver the best energy anywhere. Someone who can be innovative, looking to the future to make sure that we are ready to have Seattle be the leader for the country and the world in transforming the energy grid. I'm confident after talking to all the candidates that she's the right leader for that position. The question was, is there anything that Deborah can say in, in terms of what her plans are to fix, work, fix workplace culture? I'm going to answer for her because that starts with me and our directives. We have gone now, I met with the IDT team, we have making sure that across the city we are putting in place things in every department to make sure that they, every employee can feel welcome and safe that we have a better accountability system. I think you'll see in our budget that when we roll that out in a few weeks that we want to make sure that we make that real in the city writ large. Deborah hasn't had a chance to be on the ground in uh, City Light yet, but if confirmed, she knows that that's a number one priority. And we will be looking at number one to make sure that we get better wage uh, parity, and that means working with our trade unions and labor unions to make sure that they're doing what they need to do to bring more women into the workplace and their lines of business. So there'll be a whole range of those, but I'll say right now she hasn't had the opportunity to meet with the leadership on, on that issue, but it will be a top priority. Dan? Are there internal candidates who are finalists? And if so, was it, was it important for you to bring someone in outside of City <coughs> Light to address some of those issues? The, the final candidates that came through to, for me to review, none of them were internal candidates. I would say that for me, it was the leadership qualities that I've already discussed that were the most important. I think the search committee did a very good job of bringing me candidates like that. Um, and Deborah, from, in my opinion, was the one that had the best attributes of all the areas where we needed improvement. But again, that isn't to denigrate anyone internally. It's just where we are as a utility. We're fortunate. We're one of the best utilities in the country, and we attracted really, really competitive talent. You mentioned the workplace issues, but given the problems in billing, um, finance, budgeting, what specifically is the CEO going to do with steps um, to increase transparency and accountability besides the typical listening and learning? The question was, in addition to the workplace culture issues, we also had business and customer service issues, there's operational listers, and what specifically will the CEO do in terms of transparency other than just listen and learn what steps are we going to be taking? One of the things that she will be doing, Deborah will be doing, is going in, meeting with leadership, and coming back with a plan on all of those issues. We know that we need to do better, for example, on customer service. It's one reason that Deborah was really an attractive candidate for this position. That was a focus of hers. We have to do it. Um, it's not uh, with my city utilities, but it may be that this mayor has a secret find it, fix it account, that she goes around as a secret shopper in the city just to see how we're doing. Um, and I expect us to do better across the board. Um, it is a hard time in Seattle. It feels like the whole city is under construction. I know that's true. And the other thing that it attracted me to Deborah as a candidate and as a leader is she recognized that and recognizes that City Light cannot work alone. It has to work with Seattle Public Utilities and Seattle Department of Transportation. It has to work with Metro and others to make sure that as we bring these mega projects online, we don't have a sequential silo process. We have a collaborative process that tries to bring those big projects on time, and that's internally on budget issues and customer service, and it's externally on some of these big mega projects that we've undertaken in Seattle, and frankly, sometimes bit off more than we could chew. Can we expect any other structural changes to City Light beyond the CEO? 
The question was, can we expect other structural changes beyond the CEO? I'm going to let her get in there and make recommendations on that. I have some thoughts, but I want my leader to come back to me to say, here's the way I want to change the organization or keep the organization. Here's what we're going to do to position ourselves on purchase of power. Here's what we're going to do to position ourselves on selling power. Here's what we're going to do about BPA and licensing of the dam. I mean, this is a very complicated industry, and you need someone who understands how all those pieces fit together. So that's going to be the last question. Any other questions on other topics? And then we'll finish up here and let you guys all cool down. Let it be said. No questions. Thank you. <laughs>